Hey, gorgeous. Welcome to the Business Mindset Podcast with Holly Wharton, which combines powerful strategies on how to upgrade your business mindset, along with practical business tips to grow your business. This podcast features solo shows with Holly and also interviews with inspiring women entrepreneurs from around the world. Thank you so much for joining us today. And now, here's your host, Holly Wharton. Hello, and welcome to the Business Mindset Podcast, episode 200. Yay! So this is your host, Holly Wharton, and I am back with another solo episode. Today, I'm going to talk about how things have changed. I'm going to talk about all kinds of stuff into relation to my business and this podcast and the evolution of things in the last 200 weeks. And the reason I'm going to talk about this is because I think it's a really important conversation to be having on a kind of public level or public forum to talk about change and talk about letting go of stuff that doesn't serve us in business and talk about just how things evolve as we grow and evolve ourselves as conscious entrepreneurs. So in this episode, I'm going to be talking about the evolution of my business, evolution of the podcast. I'm going to do a quick mention of the top five episodes in case you want to go back and listen to them. I'm going to talk about something I've been talking about recently, which is the whole not fitting in thing. And then I'm also going to wrap it up with my heart-centered energy work process. So, wow, episode 200. Yay. Okay. I never would have guessed when I started my show back in August of 2013, that I'd still be doing it today. I never would have guessed that my podcast would be the one thing, the one type of content that I would be totally consistent with. I never would have guessed that creating this podcast every week would be so damn easy. And I never would have guessed that because I never considered myself to be a big talker. (laughs) I never would have thought that I would have enough to say week after week for years. And I've really surprised myself with this. And it wasn't until probably about a month ago that I sat down and I was thinking about my podcast and thinking about all the different types of content that I create. And I realized this is the one thing that it's been super easy for me to be consistent with, which is really, really exciting. I think that's a really important thing to realize. And I'm going to be putting a lot more energy into this podcast. So let's talk a little bit about how my business has evolved since I first started. So when I started this podcast, you may remember if you've listened to any of the older episodes, that it was the Socially Holistic Podcast because at that time I was helping women entrepreneurs learn how to use social media to grow their business and connect with their ideal clients online. And that was a great business and it touched on my background in online marketing and social media marketing that I had from my very first business, which was the Eco Hotels, which I don't talk about a whole lot, but which I do allude to that mysterious first business that I had for 10 and a half years and that I started in uh, 1999. So, you know, social history kind of made sense because it merged my coaching training with my background in online marketing and it was good and I know I helped people, but I got to the point where I I knew things needed to evolve because that business just never quite felt right to me. And so in 2013, just a week or so before or days before I launched this podcast back in 2013, I trained in a technique that called Psych K that I used to use to work with clients. So I trained in this technique that helps you reprogram your beliefs at the subconscious level. And I started using it with myself. And once I realized how much it changed my life to work with this technique, I realized I had to add it to my business. And so I added it to my social media business because I saw that a lot of the women that I was working with really struggled with the visibility side of things. They really struggled to use the social media to get out there and connect with their ideal clients. And it wasn't just the technical side of things that they struggled with. It was the mindset side of things. So I added the site K work, the mindset work to my socially holistic business. And I used to say that I helped women with social media from the inside and the out. So we worked on both the practical side of things, the tech side of things, but we also worked on the mindset side of things. And I think that really made my work a lot more powerful. 
But it got to the point where I realized part of my business that I really loved and my part of my business that I really enjoyed doing was the mindset work. And so eventually, and I think that was at some point in 2014, I let go of the social media business and I reclaimed an old brand that I had started back in 2011 when I first started coaching, which was Ready to Bloom. And that was when this podcast rebranded to be the Ready to Bloom podcast. So it was the same kind of thing. It was interviews, the very occasional solo show, and talking more about the mindset stuff. And then eventually, I rebranded the podcast once again. Last year, when I rebranded my business and let go of the Ready to Bloom brand, and just called it the Business Mindset Podcast. And the reason that I did did that is because that's the basis of my work. I work with women entrepreneurs on business mindset. And the reason I let go of the Ready to Bloom brand was because I felt like that was my next step in terms of visibility. I felt like I had been hiding behind a brand name and a brand logo for years. And I felt like I needed to really step up with my name and my face and myself. And I'm going to tell you that was only possible because I did a shit ton of mindset work on visibility, on releasing my fears and my blocks and my limiting beliefs and my mind crap so that I could get to the point where I could step out from behind that logo and that business name and step into the power of me being my business. Because my business is all about me. The power of my business is me. It's my knowledge. It's my skills. It's how I help people. It's how I work with people. It's my particular quirks and personality stuff that I bring to the table. And that's such an important part of my business. And as you may know, in recent months, I've let go of doing the Psyche K work and I channeled last year a new, really deeply transformational process called heart-centered energy work. And that's what I'm doing to work with clients these days. And what that does, is that helps you to simultaneously release. So it helps you to reprogram your beliefs at the subconscious level and simultaneously release any energy blocks that you have around your particular goals that we're working on. So it's super powerful. People have been getting really fast results. I've been seeing fast results with it and I love it, love it, love it. It feels so aligned to me. And I think alignment is such an important word for me because for so many years, particularly with my very first business, that I ran for 10 and a half years with a business partner. For so many years, I felt so unaligned. I felt out of touch with myself, out of touch with my values. It just wasn't right. And since then, I've been on this path to alignment. I've been on this path to reconnecting with myself and reconnecting with my power and reconnecting with my skills and the stuff that I'm good at in my unique traits and my unique stuff. And I've been doing so much mindset work that has made that easy and that's made it happen more quickly and easily than it would have been if I just kind of pushed through the process. And as my business has evolved over the last few years since 2013, The podcast has also evolved, so it's not just the branding that's evolved. You know, when I started out this podcast, I started it because I couldn't find a podcast that I wanted to listen to. What I wanted was an interview show that interviewed women entrepreneurs, just women, because women do business differently from men. And I couldn't find anything like that. And I was asking around and I was asking people if they knew of any shows and they were like, no, everything's kind of mixed. And so because I couldn't find the show I wanted to listen to, which was interviews with women entrepreneurs, I started this podcast. And the fabulous thing is that about the same time that year, 2013, so many other women stepped up and created similar shows that featured interviews with just women entrepreneurs. And that is so super powerful. And I'm so just thrilled that so many women are stepping up and speaking their truth and sharing their voices in this fantastic medium that is podcast. So that's how it started. But then I started weaving in solo shows little by little and gradually more and more and more. And like I said, this was something that I really resisted in the beginning because I've never thought of myself as being a really chatty person. In fact, I used to be super shy, super quiet, really, really quiet and shy. And so just a few years ago, I never could have guessed that I would be capable of turning on the recorder at Audacity and recording a half an hour show of me talking and sharing my knowledge. And in the act of doing this, 
And in the act of stepping up and having these solo episodes and sharing my knowledge and sharing my experience and speaking my truth, it's helped me to align with myself and align with my thoughts and align with the stuff I have to say in a way that speaking in a smaller scale on you know my YouTube videos hasn't done. So I really think that allowing myself and giving myself the space to speak for these longer chunks of time has really helped helped me to hone my own voice and my vision for what I have to say and what I want to share with people and how I can help people through speaking. And about a year ago, I think it was, I asked uh, Joe Casey to join me and to do some co-hosted episodes. I've had great feedback on those episodes. That's been another really great feature, I think, from this it for the show, because it's the two of us who have very different opinions, oftentimes, talking about business stuff from both the practical side and the mindset side, and having a conversation and making it public so that you can hear what we're talking about and you can hear our thoughts. And I think those episodes are especially rich when, as I said, we disagree on things. Because you can hear us having a conversation where we calmly and, you know, easily disagree with each other. And that gives you two different perspectives on the same topic. And it allows you to see how these two different perspectives and these two different opinions can live together. One thing is right for me, one thing is right for her. And I think it's really especially important for me to share those different viewpoints because I'm not a guru star kind of entrepreneur. I'm what's uh, known as a truth guide. So I believe that you need to follow what's true for you. So I'm not the kind of person that says there is only one way to do things and that's my way. If you follow my way, you will find success because my way may or may not work for you. So it's very important for me to showcase different voices and different opinions and different perspectives on this this show. So I think it's great that, you know, I've got not just solo episodes, but the co-hosted episodes with Joe and the interviews, because that gives you a bunch of different perspectives so that you can find what's right for you. So I also wanted to showcase very quickly the top five episodes that we've had over the years. The number one episode is how to use muscle testing in your business. And I talk about how to do self muscle testing. That's episode 96, if you want to look for it. Muscle testing is something I'm not doing so much of, but I think it's such a great technique because it's such an easy way to tap into your inner wisdom and to tap into your higher self and to also tap into your subconscious and see what your subconscious believes and to see how it's working to support you or working to hinder you or keep you blocked. So muscle testing is super powerful. And the reason this episode is the most downloaded episode is because I've linked to it from one of my YouTube videos, which is how to do self muscle testing. I think it's seven different ways to do self muscle testing. And it's my most popular video on YouTube with over 37,000 downloads. So because people are drawn to that video on YouTube, and then they see that there's additional information in the notes for the video, they will come to the podcast and download the episode. Next, number two is episode 37 from Allison Green from Ask a Manager. She's one of my favorite bloggers, such a deeply intelligent woman with such great management skills and knowledge and just fantastic ways of helping people with management issues. So she was episode 37, absolutely loved her. She's got a great community and I know she's shared the episode with her community. Top episode number three is 83 with Flora Boley. Flora also shared the episode with her community. This was a fantastic episode on how to follow your creative intuition, which I think is super, super important. So she does this really fantastic technique for painting that you can apply to all kinds of creativity. So that's a great episode if intuition is something that you really want to turn up the volume on. And the fourth top downloaded episode was episode 27 with Celestine Chua on how to build a successful business around your blog. Celestine is super, super successful, has built a thriving community around her work, 
And she's definitely worth taking a look at because she's done such great work in over the years. But when I first discovered her, she hadn't been doing it for that long. And she managed to build a really successful, thriving community around her work. So that's a great episode to listen to. Top episode number five is with Meg Warden, who talks about how to be vulnerable and tell your story without shame. This is such a powerful interview because telling your story, being open and honest and vulnerable is one of the biggest things that a lot of women struggle with. You know, how much to say? Do I say this? Do I say that? How do I know how much is too much? And how do I talk about the stuff that is super awkward and I'm uncomfortable with, but people could find out about it if they Googled me? Do I address that? Do I not? How do I do it? What? So that's a really great episode. Again, number 114. So I just want to kind of quickly run through those because I find it always interesting to see what are the top episodes, the most downloaded episodes. I know some of those are most downloaded because of the size of the community of the women that I interviewed, but some of them are also because of the topic, because they're super powerful topics. And we've got, I mean, in these 200 episodes, I have interviewed so many amazing women, talked about so many fantastic and transformational things, heard from their experiences, how they built their businesses. There's such great content in there. And it's not just for me, it's from all the amazing women that I've interviewed. So massive, massive thanks to everyone that I've interviewed on the show and to all of you listeners for listening. So thank you so much for, you know, joining me over the years and listening to this fantastic content. So that kind of brings me to another topic that I've been talking about a lot lately, partly because of a recent episode 196 with Marianne Cantwell, who recently did a TED talk on the power of not fitting in. And I think this is another really important topic to talk about because I'm going to bet that some of you who are listening, if not all of you, or most of you, have at some point felt like you didn't fit in. I know I have felt that for years. So if you've been following me at all, you probably know that I've got Asperger's or high-functioning autism, because Asperger's isn't actually a uh, diagnosis anymore, although it was when I was first diagnosed. Um, But you know, for so many years of my life, I felt like I was weird, I was wrong, I didn't fit in, and I didn't know what that was. I didn't know why that was, I just thought I was flawed in some way. And it took me until, I think it was 2014, that I first considered the possibility that I might have it, autism. And then I got my diagnosis in 2015. And that was really life-changing for me. It really helped me to have that knowledge of why I was different and how I was different and why I'd always felt like some kind of alien from another planet that didn't fit in. So it's helped me to have that label and have that name and have that language for why I am the way I am and how I am and how I function because it's helped me to understand myself more deeply and it's helped me to take care of myself better. But whether or not you have a label or whether or not you want to label or, you know, labels aside, whatever. I think there's a great power in not fitting in. And if you're interested in Marianne's TED Talk, I'm going to put the link in the show notes so you can listen to it. It's, you know, like all TED Talks, less than 17 minutes long, super powerful because in this online business world, which is becoming more and more saturated, more and more women out there doing stuff that's hugely transformational and helpful, but there's more and more of us doing this. So that's why it's more and more and more and more important that you not try to fit in. Don't try to be neutral. Don't try to be beige. You need to stand out. We all need to stand out with our unique stuff. And I've said this so many times over the years, and it's, and I know you've heard this before, but it's so important to just be yourself, to be authentic, to really get clear on what it is that makes you different and what it is that makes you unique so that you can tell your unique story and just do your thing and be you. And that was so hard for me to do. So when I say that, I know it's not like, well, just go out and be yourself with no filters. It's not that easy, but it doesn't have to be hard either. And it was doing the mindset work that really helped me step up and accept myself for who I am, how I am, as I am today. And really not just accept that, but value that and value the fact that I'm different and value all the different ways that I'm different. And to see my differences as good things, because they are. So not fitting into a box, but rather creating your own box, 
and redefining your box whenever you feel like it or just throwing the box away and just doing your own thing. That's super, super powerful. So do check out that TED Talk. I think it's really important message for all of us to hear, but especially for women like us who have felt like we don't fit in for one reason or another. This is super powerful stuff to really let sink in because the more we step into our uniqueness, the more we give other women permission to be their own unique selves and to stand up in their uniqueness and to shine their freak light (laughs) or their unique wavelength of light or however you want to call it and to be our unique selves. That is stepping into your personal power. And that's something I know a lot of women struggle with because that's one of the biggest things that I work on with people. And so, you know, I talk a lot about doing the mindset work to get you to where you need to be. And what does that mean? So that means identifying who you are, where you are in your business, where you want to be headed, and who you need to be to create that business and life of your dream and to achieve your goals and to achieve your vision that you have for your business and life. And then to look at the stuff that might get in the way. What are the fears? What are the blocks? What are the limiting beliefs that might get in the way? You've got to figure this stuff out and you've got to get clear on it rather than sweeping it under the rug and shoving it down and pretending it doesn't exist because it won't go away. It'll just sit there. And to me, the importance of doing this work is to get that clarity so that you can then do the deep mindset work at a very deep level to make the these changes. So to reprogram your beliefs at the subconscious level, to release energy blocks that might be getting in the way so that you can more easily take action to build your business and the lifestyle that you want. And there are a thousand techniques out there that you can use. I talk about this all the time. It's not just me promoting my thing. It's about finding what technique works for you. And sometimes that requires trial and error. So I've tried tons of things over the years that worked, some things that didn't. I trained in NLP. I never used it because it was never quite right for me. I've done hypnotherapy and I love the concept of hypnotherapy, but it never really got me the big results. I've done theta healing and I've worked with a couple of really great theta healers and they have gotten me great results. So that's been great. Psych K was amazing for me. It was great in getting me results. Tapping has been good for me. But the big things over the years that have gotten me the biggest results were Psych K, which I did for years in my business, and now the heart-centered energy work. It's what works for me. It's my thing. It's what gets me the best results and the biggest results. And again, you know, that's changed over time. So as you can see, Psych K was perfect for me for years. And now I've moved on to something else because this is what I need to step up in my life now. So it's about finding what works for you. And if you're curious about heart-centered energy work, and if you you want to learn more, pop me an email over at holly at hollywarton.com or just go on my website, hollywarton.com and click on the content, uh, contact box and get in touch there. Happy to have a chat to tell you a little bit more about it and to help you decide whether or not it's right for you. And like I said, I get that it might not be right for you because I think that everyone's got their own kind of best technique to use and this may or may not be right. You've got to find what works for you and you've got to do the work if you want to get ahead in your business more quickly and easily. So if you feel like you're stuck, if you feel like you've been struggling, if you feel like you've been taking a ton of actions, but they're not working, it's time to do the mindset work because that's what's going to give you the big boost. Because if you're taking all the action, but your subconscious mind is not working along with you, if it's sabotaging you, then, you know, it's going to be like two steps forward and one step backward. It's really, really frustrating. I've been there. I've been there. So I really encourage you to do the work you need to do to get the changes you need to make to build your business. And, you know, this is something I've been talking a lot about with friends lately. It's, I, I totally recognize that it's not just about building your business. And I think sometimes we need to kind of float up and get that bigger perspective. You know, we're not here to just build a business. We're here to help people. But your business is your vehicle for helping people. So if you're not getting the steady stream of clients that you want, if you're not working with the kind of people that you want. Do the mindset work to make that easier. So I hope you've found this episode to be interesting and useful. It's kind of a recap of the last 200 weeks since this podcast launched. 
I think it's really important to have these conversations when we talk about evolution, when we talk about how we change and how we grow with our business. And and we talk about how it's totally valid to switch things up and it's totally valid to change. I've changed my business so much over the years because I was doing a ton of work with myself and really stepping into myself and to who I am. And when that happens, you need to make changes. You need to make changes in your business. You need to make changes in the type of the content that you're creating. You need to make changes in your life. So give yourself permission to make the changes you need to make to really step into your greatness and step into the full power of who you are and how you help people. I think that's really, really important. And again, that goes back to the power of not fitting in, the power of being yourself, the power of stepping into you, your uniqueness, your strengths. Give yourself permission to do that. So I'm going to wrap things up here. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey. I would, as always, love for you to join me in my private Facebook group, Business Mindset Alchemists. It's a group that's dedicated to exploring business mindset and how you can get the mindset you need to achieve your dreams. So I would love to see you in there. If you're a woman entrepreneur, just go to hollywharton.com forward slash group and that will redirect you to the Facebook group itself. I would love to see you in there. And I would love to generate more conversations as a result of this podcast. So I know a lot of podcast listeners are in there and I would love to have kind of more two-way conversations with all of you, my lovely listeners. And I'm going to have some invitations coming up soon. I would like to showcase one of my listeners on the show. So stay tuned for links and information on how you can do that. And thank you again for listening. If you love this show, I would love to have you review it on iTunes. That would mean the world to me. So thank you again for listening and remember to visit hollywharton.com forward slash 200 for the show notes on this episode. And thanks for joining me over these 200 weeks. Thanks so much for listening to the Business Mindset Podcast with your host, Holly Wharton. You can find more information about today's episode, including links for topics that were discussed at hollywharton.com. And if you enjoyed this episode, please remember to head over to iTunes and leave a quick review of this podcast. It just takes a minute. Thank you.